Hey gang, I'm back in the office and ready to assemble that one light direct flash bikini composite. The pen and tablet are set up, the caffeine is nearby, and just in case things don't go well, Okay, before we get started, let's be clear about one thing. I am not a master Photoshop retoucher. I am honored by the requests that I get to show Photoshop tutorials. But here's the thing, I'm not gonna start doing that because there are people out there that are doing an amazing job of it and there's nothing that I'm gonna bring to the table that is different or unique. I promise you, along the way, I will definitely include some of my little tips and tricks and the things that work well for me, but I'm not gonna start producing full-blown tutorials. I would encourage you, if you're really looking to advance with your Photoshop or your retouching skills, go check out Kelby One or even lynda.com. If you can't afford them, do a search on YouTube. There are a lot of people doing tremendous tutorials. Check them out, see who you like, who you can understand the best, who has the pace that you're able to work with the most, subscribe to their channel. The bottom line is practice, practice, practice. So, my setup. I'm working on a 27 inch iMac, it's fully loaded. I also have a 27 inch cinema screen next to it so I've got a two screen setup. I use a Wacom medium sized tablet and a pen. It happens to be the wireless tablet but I have it plugged in and it stays plugged in pretty much all the time. If you're not retouching with a pen yet, I highly recommend it. You know there are a lot of different ways to do these composites. You could do an image like this or like this or even a series like this with multiple images side by side. Now when you're going to do one like this, you're creating masks and templates and backgrounds, that's a lot more work. We're gonna keep it simple today and we're gonna work on a solid color background and line the images up side by side. So if we look on my screen here, you can see the Capture One software. If you remember in the first video, I used Capture One so that I could shoot tethered that way, as the images were downloading, they were also being processed at the same time. I've already gone through the shoot to figure out which images I'm gonna use, and I've picked out the five that I am most interested in for the composite. I'll show them to you real quick here. Those are the five we're gonna work with. Now, I've already done the retouching on them, but I assure you it was pretty much nothing on these images. All I had to do was a little bit of healing tool to take care of a few blemishes and a scratch that she had. That's it. So I exported the files out of Capture One as PSDs. I've got them here in Photoshop, but now I need to get them all into one file. So I'm thinking that this image here is going to be the center of my composite because her pose is kind of symmetrical, so that way I can set up two on either side of her. So the first thing I want to do is take this image and so that I don't write over the original image, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this as a file called composite. Then I'm gonna take the canvas and I'm gonna, right now it's at like 16.373 inches. I'm gonna expand this out to about 55 inches. So it's gonna be nice and big. We'll fit it all on the screen there. Now I need to get each of the other images and I need to paste them into my composite file. Okay, and let's just go through and make sure I've got all five. I do, okay, good. Now at this point, I'll hit save again. That way I've got them all saved in that one file and I don't need the original files. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close those out. That way I don't run a risk of working on the wrong file and wasting my time. And these files are pretty big. The Nikon DA10 shoots 75 megabyte files. So I'm also freeing up a lot of system resources by closing out those files because this composite file, it's gonna get pretty big. So now I've gotta figure out what order I'm gonna use these images in. There's no right or wrong, there's no exact science. It's really kind of a flavor to taste scenario. Since she's looking from the left to the right on this shot, I think this would be a really good one to go ahead and set up as the left-hand side of the image, so I'm gonna move her over there. And this coral salmon color bikini, I think I'll go ahead and move this over to the right side. The pink bikini, 
I kind of like the idea of that being a little bit in the background. I am going to stagger these images in terms of size so that I can create some depth along the way. I don't want it to look like a, a lineup with a bunch of mug shots, okay? Um, this image here with the pink bikini, I'm going to put that in the back, and mainly because that's one of the more provocative ones. Remember, this set of pictures is for a commercial modeling portfolio, so we don't want anything to be too sexy. And I get it, most people would say that's not too sexy, but the fact is some people would. So we're going to make that in the background, and then we're going to leave that red bikini in the middle, and I'm going to move that layer up top so that I have it to work on. So there you go. Looks great, right? No, of course not. It looks like crap. I've got to get rid of the overlay backgrounds that are on top of these other images, but here's where the simplicity of this comes in. So keep in mind, this was planned. That's why I have her on a white background. It's so that I can make things really easy after the fact. I've got clean edges. I'm not trying to take out things in the background that have all kind of detail. You can use programs that will do this for you. Programs like Topaz Remask, and, and there's tons of others. By all means, Google them, check them out, try them. Most of them have free sample downloads that you can try them out for 30 days. I found that when I'm planning ahead and working on solid color backgrounds, I really don't need those. I'm, I'm not gaining anything with them. So the way I'm gonna take these backgrounds out, again, super simple. I am going to take my magic wand, Keep my tolerance, yeah, middle of the road, it's like 24. I'll go ahead, select the area around the model, make sure that I get the areas that are the background in between her arms, in between her legs. Before I cut this out, I'm gonna grab the rectangular marquee tool and I'm gonna extend the selection just a little bit. The reason I'm doing that is I found in the past that if I don't, I often get a faint white line right down the edge here, and then it's gonna be sitting right over top of the other picture of her. So this way I make sure that there's no faint white line. But before I take the background out, I wanna go up here to select, modify, feather. I use 1.5 pixels. You can use one pixel, you can use two pixels, 1.5. You don't want too many, but you don't want too few. I find 1.5 works. So I'm gonna go ahead and feather the pixel selection by 1.5 pixels. Now I can go ahead and hit Command or Control X, take the background out. I need to repeat that on all three of the front or top images. So there's only one selection I need to make on this one. That's pretty good. I'll grab my rectangular marquee again, extend that background, go ahead and select Modify Feather, one and a half pixels, and Command or Control X. Switch over to the left side in the light blue bikini. Select the background, select that bigger area behind her shoulders, in between her legs. Grab the marquee tool, expand the background a little bit more. Select, modify, feather, one and a half, and command or control X. Okay, so there's cleanup to do, but before we do that, I want to go ahead and get the images kind of sized and lined up so that I know I've got everything right where I want it. I'll start over on the left. I am going to put her fairly close to the edge. So next, going to the pink bikini, I want to move her over a little bit and I'm going to put her just a little bit behind. The red bikini, I'm going to bring her over so there's just a little overlap going on right about there. We'll go back to the pink bikini here, and again, same thing. I'm going to let it overlap just a little, but not much. And then the coral salmon bikini, a little bit of overlap there. In fact, that pink bikini, I'm going to bring that back a little. So now, I kind of like where they're at in, in terms of being lined up. You'll see I've got a double image back here from the background. So what I'll do is create a new layer back there, and I'm going to sample this background that I have here. It's white, but it's not pure white. So that's why I sampled it. I'll go ahead and drop in a background. So now, now we get a better sense of what it's gonna look like. So at this point, I've gotta work out the size relationship. So one of the best examples is this pink bikini. Even though she's in the background, she's taller than the others. So if I select that layer, I'm gonna go up here to Edit, Free Transform, hold my shift key down so I don't squeeze the picture, I'm just resizing it. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring things down a little bit to make her look like she is behind the others. Good. 
And now I want to do the same thing with the pink bikini over here. So I will select that layer, do the free transform. And same thing, I'm going to bring her down just a little bit. Good, that works. Okay, I'm going to move her over just a tad too. Awesome. I can go ahead now and crop my image so I know exactly how much I have to work on here. And that actually looks pretty good. So there we have the full arrangement. Now we just have to clean up a few of the artifacts where the images overlap because they're not overlapping a lot. So there's only a little bit of work to do. So we'll start out, let's go up to 100% here and I'm going to move over to the hair overlap that I have right here. There's a little bit of rough stuff. So we'll select that layer with the coral bikini. And simply all I'm gonna do is go to the background eraser tool. Tolerance around 30. I do wanna protect the foreground color. So that being said, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna select her hair and go back to my background eraser tool. The other important thing with the background eraser tool is to make sure that I've got a very soft brush. I don't want it to be too hard. The size really it doesn't have to be too big. One thing that I find people tend to do in Photoshop is they want to go to 100% and try and do everything in one swoop so that it's fast. That usually doesn't work. Generally, you've got to do things piecemeal, a little bit at a time and a little bit of time, and you're building. You're going to get better results that way. So we'll go back here, and I'm going to go ahead and start to color that out just so I don't have any crazy overlap with that hair. Done. Real simple. Now I'll go ahead and look at the next overlap and there's really nothing that I've got to deal with here on that one so I'm good to go. Come over here, I've got a little bit of stuff that I got to take out of her hair up here. It hair is the same color so I don't need to uh, change my foreground color but I do need to make sure I select the layer with the red bikini. And then I'm going to go ahead and get in there and I'm going to draw out that white that's there. Okay. Real simple. So there you have it. That's the bikini composite. That's how I do a simple composite with everybody on the same color background. So that's all for now. Until next time, keep thinking, keep learning, and keep shooting. And keep photoshopping. Adios. Thanks for watching. If you find these videos helpful, please give them a thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And if you've got a question that you'd like answered, post it in the comment section below. Your question could be my next video.